oxyacetylene torch. And I don't know why, but I flipped it up like toward my face. You can see my hairline's oh, yeah. a little bit higher on one side. Forged in Fire is the kind of TV show that makes you wonder about safety. The number of sharp and powerful weapons on the show is just too much. So, have there ever been accidents or injuries on the show? But before that, do well to hit that subscribe button if you're new, drop a like, and comment. In the light of that, let's get to the list. Number 1. Eric's Fail Eric is a blacksmith with 12 dangerous years of experience. His experience was not an injury, it was about a failure that could have ended brutally if he hadn't handled the situation well. Eric was grinding a metal for a smooth or sharp surface. As usual, there were tiny little sparks, but unlike the usual, the sparks became a fire. When he had tried to grab something else, he described the fire as a gasoline fire. He was able to contain the fire without getting hurt, he also promised himself never to do that again. And then I switched and grabbed something steel and Shit. sparks, and it was a fireball. I mean, it looked like gasoline fire. It was Ooh, damn. Number two, Matt's forehead. Matt is a funny, tough-looking blacksmith with over 20 years of cutting and carving blades professionally. He had an injury at work. He described his injury as one that every blacksmith has or has recovered from. Well, Salem was in agreement with this claim too. Matt had cut his forehead when he was working on a hammer. He had mistakenly clocked himself in the forehead. We don't know what the hammer was doing so close to his forehead, but Salem said he had sustained an injury from doing that too. So maybe it's a blacksmith thing. First time I worked on a real anvil that had actual rebound, and I clocked myself in the forehead with a ball peen hammer. I've done that too. Number three, Salem's Burn. Salem is another blacksmith with at least 12 years of experience. He was also working when he got his injury. Salem had mistakenly burnt a part of his hair out so much that it never grew again. He had flipped a touch towards his face unconsciously, but it landed on the side of his scalp. And as if that wasn't enough, hair never grew out of that part of his hair. His injury is so fatal and brutal that he had to make the wearing of caps and hats his lifestyle. He had also cut himself in the forehead. This proves that blacksmiths that create those beautiful powerful weapons you are obsessing over are also human. Using an oxyacetylene torch, and I don't know why, but I flipped it up like toward my face. You can see my hairline's oh, yeah. a little bit higher on one side. Yeah. Number four, Mike's eye. Mike is another part-time blacksmith who is more of a blade expert. He has over seven years of service. He was grinding a blade very diligently when a piece of hot orange burnt right through his eyes and into his eye. It burnt him so badly that it left an obvious scar right under his eyes. The experience would have left him blind, but he was lucky that it was under his eye. This is another painful ordeal faced by these creators. If he was wearing protective gear when this happened, maybe injuries are truly unavoidable. Ending in the first second, I watch in slow motion as this piece of grinder slag, molten orange, comes spiraling around right over the lens and catches me in the eye. Number five, Bert's knife cut. Bert was working on a knife when he got a very bad injury. He said he had just finished it. This means that the knife was 100% sharp. He was on the finishing process of adding some oil and other things. Because of the oil, the knife slipped out of his hands and he tried to grab it. Unfortunately, his fingers met with a sharp edge and cut through his fingers. Imagine that kind of pain and shock he must have experienced when the blade went through his fingers. Bert said that when the doctor was stitching his finger back together, he had passed out and that was his first time passing out. It is said that blacksmith have never truly worked until they sustain some injuries. Maybe this is true, that no matter the years of experience, injuries were necessary evils. Bert had over 14 years of designing blades, but still got a brutal cut. Feel warm in here? I had a knife I was working on years ago, and I just finished it, and it was perfectly sharp, and I put a coat of oil on it, and then it slipped out of my hand. Number six, Kelly's finger. Yes. Kelly is a female blacksmith. The job and injuries are also handled pretty well and maturely by women too. Kelly is another part-time blacksmith who looks like she's still going to college. This means that she looks like the type of strong woman that can handle school and work. If you can do that, there's nothing one can't handle. Even if it is a cut, burn, broken skin, or finger, she's tough. With over five years of experience, Kelly was sure to come across some injuries. She had survived a severe injury when she skinned her finger off on a bartender. 
this is absolutely painful, right? She also suffered some burns on her body. In the end, she assures the audience that she had found a solution to the burn, which is a tattoo. Kelly is proof that males and females suffer the same kind of injury and they are tough enough to heal from pain and continue working. Fingers off on the belt sander or like that. I burn everything on my body. The nice thing about tattoos, they cover some yeah. things up. <laughs> Number 7. Jared's Burnt Blacksmiths on Forged in Fire have experienced avoidable and unavoidable brutal injuries, from skin, burnt to broken fingers, or a deep cut. Most of these injuries and fails are mostly unavoidable because of the nature of their jobs. One of the unavoidable injuries is Jared's Burn. Jared is a part-time blacksmith, but he has been in the cutting business for 32 cool years. He had sustained a burnt injury from work. He was working on a blade when it melted into his leather jacket, it entered into his sleeves, and it continued to melt into his skin. He had tried to remove his jacket, but the molting iron was still burning into his elbow pit. Jared's burn is one of the most severe injuries in Forged in Fire. The good thing is that Jared still has his arm. The burn was treated and he was back to forging like it never happened. From a glob of metal that fell down. I had my leather jacket on and it fell down the sleeve. Ah, oh, and it was sitting dance. there. Yeah, well, I'm trying to get my coat off. Number eight, Ben's injury. Forged in Fire is known for casting professional blacksmiths. In spite of this, it is not impossible for them to get badly wounded. Ben's injury is an example of a really painful injury. He is a part-time blacksmith for over 30 years. He was carving a knife with another smaller blade when he cut his finger with the blade. The cut was so deep and painful that he had about 15 stitches across three of his fingers. He must have been in a lot of agony and pain. Being a blacksmith is not as easy and fancy as Forged in Fire presents the work to be. In spite of this experience, Ben and none of the other blacksmiths stopped forging. They tell their stories and experience with laughter and victory. One of those Dremel tools with a saw blade? Yes. I uh, caught that on my fingers and ended up with 15 stitches across three Ouch. fingers. Ouch. Your career as a guitar player was put on hold though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Number 9, Andy's Squashed Face. Andy is a born blacksmith. He had been cutting, carving, and grinding iron since he was in the ninth grade. He had his very first and most brutal injury at that time too. He was forging a blade when he poured some oil into a little cup for his creation. Unfortunately, the blade was still very hot, so he ended up squashing his adorable face with the oil, destroying the homecoming dance that he was supposed to attend that day. Now, Andy has 18 years experience in crafting beautiful blades. So I ended up splashing my face with burning gasoline. Then I went out with my date. Did not go well. <laughs> there was no second date, huh? There was no second date. <laughs> Number 10, Frank's Beard. Sometimes these forgers don't just lose their dates, their hair, their skin, blood, or fingers. Sometimes they lose something they really take pride in to produce beautiful blades. Frank has a beautiful long white beard. It is so soft and iconic that it is easy to fall in love with. The beard is also pure white. Now, when Frank is forging, he needs to stand close to the fire, and when he does, he would not only lose some of his amazing beards, it also gets darker. When the wind is too much and Frank is working, he knows that he has to say goodbye to some of his legacy. Some of the blacksmiths can't leave the lifestyle they want, keep a particular hairstyle, or wear certain clothes because of the fails and injury it will cost them. Whenever I get close to the fire and it's windy, I've smoked this mustache three times. <laughs> Forged in Fire has shown us that superheroes really don't wear capes or fancy colored tight pants. Blacksmiths are superheroes that bring their imagination to life at the cost of many injuries and fails they experience. 